On this instalment of Projector, Aardman's ever-popular Sean the Sheep gets his own spin-off movie and three boys discover the key to a vast conspiracy while looking through the trash. Welcome to Projector, and our first movie today sees the adventures of Sean the Sheep come to the big screen. A mischievous young sheep named Sean, voiced by Justin Fletcher, decides he's tired of the farmer's strict daily routine and wants the day off, so he hatches a plan to fool the farmer into falling asleep. However, things end up going awry, and the farmer is sent hurstling into the big city in his caravan and getting lost. Now it's up to Sean to find him and bring him back, only to discover the entire flock has followed him there. And that's not good news when Overzare's animal containment officer Trumper, voiced by Omar Jalili, is hot on their trail. Becoming hugely popular after his first appearance in Watts and Gromit's A Close Shave, Sean the Sheep got his own TV spin-off series that were basically a collection of dialogue-free shorts. So when they announced they were going to be doing a film version, I thought dialogue would be the first thing they would add. So imagine my surprise when it wasn't. I should have known better given the talents of Aardman that they wouldn't do a thing like that to one of their own creations, but many animal-led movies have had dialogue forced onto them to help expand them to feature length and feel like they'll hold children's attention like Marmaduke or Walking with Dinosaurs. In an age almost entirely dominated by CGI animation, it's a rare treat in of itself to see a movie in stop motion, but a stop motion film that has virtually no dialogue whatsoever? Now that's impressive, and it shows a formidable confidence from Aardman to keep that approach to the film version. But it makes sense they have kept it that way given the show's appeal to younger audiences that stems from its largely visual storytelling that everyone can easily understand. Instead of dubbing, most international versions of Shaun the Sheep movie will digitally alter the signage and writing to fit the language that it's being released in, a practice that is fairly common for foreign versions of computer animated flicks. However, it's important to note that while it bears a heavy debt to silent cinema and certainly most prominent mainstream example since the artist, it's not free of any audio, and the sound design is actually a vital part of why this film works so well. Not just Ilanish Carey's expressive and dynamic score, but also the voice work of Justin Fletcher and John Sparkles as the main characters that subtly brings them to life. When the characters do speak, it's usually grunts and gibberish that sounds like baby talk, which makes sense when you consider the stories from the perspective of barnyard animals who probably don't know exactly what's being said either. Indeed, the closest you'll get to actual words is something monosyllabic like no if you listen very closely. It proves that you don't even need the actual words to convey what's being said so much as the tone of how it is, and often a well-timed bleat or sigh from Sean or similar will sell the joke and tell more than actual dialogue could, as well as being far funnier than a talking animal delivering some cringeworthy half-pun or dated topical references. The lack of any dialogue actually provides a heavier challenge to the animators because it gives them more to work on, as well as putting more pressure on the expression of the animation, but it also gives the Arman team room to shine and show their versatility. Of course, Arman have had plenty of experience when it comes to animating characters that don't talk, from the likes of Morph to Gromit, both of whom are as beloved as Sean here, and even some of the early Wallace and Gromit adventures only have Wallace in a speaking role. There's something in the inherent tactile quality that stop motion has that gives the style personality because they're real life objects, and that's something that Arman themselves embrace in the fact they still to this day have deliberate imperfections like fingerprints, even as their films themselves get more complex and sophisticated aided by subtle CGI enhancements or additions that never draw attention away from the aesthetic. Even the big-eyed character models themselves and the way they move tell us a lot about them, and there's a careful attention to detail in their work that can be seen in every frame, and even more so under the increased scrutiny of the big screen. I found it really amusing, for instance, that Sheepdog Bitzer carries his wristwatch even while he's walking on all fours. Aardman are very cine-literate and have a particular fondness for science 
science cinema and especially slapstick comedy. So there are plenty of sequences in Shaun the Sheep movie that are very reminiscent of something in a Three Stooges comedy, especially in extended set pieces that revolve around the flock disguising themselves as people and clumsily trying to pass for human in places such as restaurants by way of imitation. These are very physical comedy scenes and the Aardman team have a fantastic sense of timing and wit to go with their humour that's quite amazing considering the painstaking work that goes into making a film like this, or even the shambling movements of the sheep as they flop around in their ill-fitting clothes. The work that goes into the gags is worth it because they play beautifully. Its reliance on visuals as well as the sweet but simple story means that you have a movie that's universal and accessible in the true Aardman style while still retaining their identity. You can see this in the way the big city itself is depicted. It looks like a mixture of every major British city that should be familiar to local viewers, while at the same time remaining generic enough that international viewers will equally recognise it after it's been localised. Although on the downside, there's less of the freeze-frame jokes and puns that you'd normally find in something like the Pirates. However, it's the core storyline that both kids and adults will relate to, and there's also the family unit that the cast of the farm itself makes up that gives some real heart and sweetness to the material, emphasised by the film's opening credit scene. Writer-directors Mark Burson and Richard Starzak's script is a straightforward story well told, expanding the show's universe with hardly a moment wasted and always constantly on the move. And even though there's a few sly movie references that place the older crowd, namely those to Cape Fear and the Science of the Lambs fittingly, it works because of the quality of the farce at hand, which is in an identifiable world, but also surreal and silly without taking taking itself too far. Even the main villain Trumper, created for the movie, is humorous in the way he carries out his job with absurd military precision while carrying some amount of menace, although likely not enough to disturb most children as Burst and Starzak understand who their main audience is. In spite of a fun subplot involving the farmer walking around the city with amnesia, the plot itself does feel a little thin as it extends to reach its 80 minute running time given the way that the story climaxes several times near the end. But Ask me this, how many movies take the time out to have an inspired barbershop number sung by sheep? Not many, let me tell you, and this one's all the better for it. It's a film that's suitable for all ages, and I mean that in the best possible way, because I think that everyone will find something to enjoy in this movie. Sean the Sheep movie is terrific fun that retains the spirit of both Arm and themselves as well as the show it's based on. Boldly dismissing almost any spoken dialogue, the star of the show becomes the fantastic stop motion animation itself. Its slapstick heavy visuals pay homage to classic science cinema, while the story is wonderfully simple and the well executed gags come flying thick and fast, meaning that viewers of all ages will be kept engaged from start to finish. It's sweet natured, breezy fun that will leave you and your kids with smiles on your faces. After the break, I'll be reviewing the new movie from writer Richard Curtis and director Stephen Daldry. Welcome back, as a group of Brazilian kids find something that could change the fortunes of the country in the trash. Rafael Gardo and Rato, played by Rickson Tevez, Eduardo Lewis and Gabriel Weinstein, are three boys working in a trash dump in Rio de Janeiro. When Rafael finds the wallet of Jose Angelo, played by Wagner Mora, the trio decide to work together to figure out the secrets of its contents, setting them on a dangerous adventure as they try to evade the police chasing after them as they gradually unlock a far-reaching political scandal. Trash is adapted from Andy Mulligan's young adult novel of the same name, which is not set in any specific country, so director Stephen Doldry has decided to place the action in the slums of Brazil. It was recently nominated at the BAFTAs for Best Foreign Film, which I did think was a bit odd, considering it was made by UK production company Working Title with a British writer and director. The choice to place the story in that location is a canny one. It's somewhere where there is a huge disparity between the rich and the poor that feels both appropriately modern in its more gentrified areas and brutally tough in its more poverty-stricken ones. The large divide is emphasised by the fact that the central figure at the heart of the conspiracy, a corrupt mayoral candidate called Santos, played by Stepan Nassan, does not even directly encounter the three young heroes, but the influence of his power and corruption can be felt elsewhere. When Raphael 
male at one point asked what he did to deserve this as a homeless kid from the street, he could just as easily be asking that about his living conditions instead of being targeted for what he knows. That's one of the more eloquent moments in Richard Curse's script, which may sound odd given he's better known for romantic comedies like About Time and Love Actually, but makes perfect sense given his active campaigning and charity work. And it's clear that Curtis has a keen awareness of the issues in trash, but he's not exactly the most subtle writer, and the message is delivered with a very heavy hand. Nevertheless, the grit of this choice of backdrop does add a layer of realism to what is essentially a Robin Hood story with fairy tale elements, meaning that the idealism for radical change is not misplaced. The setting also buzzes with vibrancy and life despite its hardships, with the sun scorched locations looking bright, bold, and colourful. Stephen Dolger is not usually known for being this energetic given his direction of dramas like The Hours and Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, but there's an immediacy to his work here that recalls what Danny Boyle did for India and Slumdog Millionaire that this parsley resembles at times. The flashy and kinetic cinematography and editing that Dolger uses here are all too appropriate given this is essentially a chase movie where the action is constantly on the move. Even if that's sometimes due to the rather implausible coincidences and escapes Curtis writes to help his characters out of their toughest situations. One thing that Dolger is known for is getting fantastic performances from his child actors who have often never worked on screen before, like Jamie Bell and Billy Elliot, and the three unknowns that he's chosen to lead trash are truly revelations. Despite having never acted previously, you wouldn't know it from looking at the three boys' performances. I think it helps that Doldry allows them to mostly act in their natural Portuguese rather than English, which gives them confidence in their parts, but in general they don't seem like they're really acting, and certainly not in the very staged manner that child actors are known to. They look like kids who are just having a lot of fun, getting to run around and be very physical, and I think that boisterous attitude they bring to the movie also gives it its life. There's a natural chemistry that allows them to play off feature, making their friendship not only believable, but also plausible. You believe that these kids have had to fend for themselves, and have had to take up work at a young age to support themselves, because there's almost not a parent in sight, so they need to look out for themselves and each other. Whether they continue acting or not, they each make terrific impressions. Wisely, Doldry keeps most of the dramatic heavy lifting to the international cast of well-known actors that he's placed in supporting roles, including Brazilian stars like Wagner Moura as the the mysterious banker who sets the events in motion to sell to Mello as the ruthless cop chasing after the kids. The English-speaking American leads, Rooney Mara and Martin Sheen, have small but pivotal roles working in a Christian mission near the dump, sheltering and educating the kids, but crucially using their nationality as a way of aiding them in their quest. Sheen especially impresses the local priest who wants to help but has become jaded by the bureaucracy that stifles him, while Mara is a bit underserved as his mom and counterpart Part who records the kid's story on her camcorder that serves as the movie's framing device. The multiple language approach to the dialogue is a decision that also serves to ground the movie in reality, even as some audiences may be put off by it. The split is roughly 70% Portuguese, 30% English. However, the part subtitling of the film speaks to a larger problem in terms of its execution, in that I feel that Curse and Doldry have missed their intended demographic for this film just slightly. Trash may be an adventure movie at its heart, but it's one rooted in dark themes like police and state corruption and child exploitation, and these are things the movie does not shy away from as it tries to highlight awareness of these issues. However, in terms of the film's content, I do think the filmmakers have overstepped the mark. As I was watching the movie, it did feel like it was totally being made towards younger teenagers in line with its source material, who would have likely empathised with the characters in their plight, as well as telling them about poverty that they may not be aware of. However, this audience will not be able to see the film in the UK because the movie has a 15 rating that restricts anyone younger than that from seeing it, an age limit that is in fact older than the protagonists. This is in large part down to one extended sequence where Raphael is abducted and brutalised by the corrupt police by being flung around in a car without a seatbelt, and far be it from me to tell an acclaimed filmmaker like Doldry how to make his movie, but this could have easily been toned down without losing its impact. Likewise, Curtis Pepper's the 
script with a lot of swearing. If they're kids on the street, I can understand them being foul-mouthed, and their banter is often funny, but there's also a pointless moment where the kids drop the F-bomb four times in very quick succession that feels jarringly out of place, as well as meaning that it won't fare better in America because that one scene alone will give this movie an R rating. It's baffling things like this that suggest that Curse and Daldry either didn't know who they were making this for or misjudged it, and that's been costly to the success of the film itself. Despite being subtitled, if this was released with a 12 rating during the school holidays, it might have stood some chance of doing well. As it stands, it's simply been dumped into cinemas for adults, who likely found it too simplistic, and it bombed badly in the UK as a result. Trash is a well-intentioned drama and chase movie inspired the moralising of Richard Curse's script. The three unknown kids chosen to be the leads have a very natural screen presence and give the film a lot of its energy, as well as Stephen Daltrey's uncharacteristically lively direction that captures a sense of the spirit and vibrancy of Rio and its locations. The US-Brazilian cast lends solid support in key roles, and I hope this movie finds an audience that will discover an underseen surprise if they dig deep enough. Do you agree with me on trash and its age restrictions? If you have any thoughts on that or any of the movies featured on today's show, please let me know. Until next time, I'm Matthew Buck, fading out. Ba -ba 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 -ba.